These two products right here is the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max from Ubiquiti. And in this video, we'll try and answer a question that everybody always wonders is, well, which one should you buy? Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. We're gonna deep dive into these boxes and see what comes with them. We'll look at the specs head to head, and then finally we'll do some testing towards the end. So stick around then to find out which one you should buy. So let's start by unboxing both of these two right here. Taking a look at these head-on, they look very similar in size, so let's go ahead and take off the plastic cover on both of these. And this is the Pro Max and this is the Pro. So if we put them actually back to back, you will see they are exactly the same size. So it is just the power within them. We have a aluminium casing on the back with a polycarbonate case on the front and we will have the LED that we've come to know and see on the Ubiquiti access points once we power these up. On the back of both of them, we have a two and a half gig uplink port. So they're both capable of doing two and a half gig. But do keep in mind, just if you don't have two and a half gig, you can still use the gigabit connection on here. You just might not get the full throughput. Also inside the box, you have the mounting template to make sure it's straight with a spirit level at the bottom. You have this mount that comes in, which allows you to mount to all different types of products. And you have this, which is usually for a suspended ceiling. Also, we have all the screws, the fixtures and fittings and everything you need for all the different scenarios where you would be mounting this access point. And we also have a release tool and an Allen key for some of the fittings in here. Let's jump straight into the technical specs of the two units. So here you can see them side by side. They both support Wi-Fi 7 with 6 gigahertz. The U7 Pro has six spatial streams, whereas the U7 Pro Max has eight spatial streams. In terms of coverage, the U7 Pro does 140 square meters and the U7 Pro Max does 160 square meters. So your range on the Pro Max is that little bit more if you're looking for something that can do that. You can have 300 plus devices on the Pro and 500 plus devices on the Pro Max, and they both use PoE Plus with 2.5 gigabits per second uplink ports as I mentioned right at the start when I was showing you the unit. Now, the important thing to note is MLO is coming and it's not available yet. And basically what that means is it can utilize all three channels to send your data across rather than sticking to one specific one like six gigahertz or five gigahertz or even 2.4 gigahertz. Also with the U7 Pro Max, we have the real time spectral analysis to make sure you are using the best channel available in your area. And we will take a look at that later on in this video. Now, having a quick look here, looking a bit further into tech specs, I'm liking this part of the website even more, which is techspecs.ui.com, which you can go and compare multiple products to. You can see the unit itself is exactly the same in terms of size and weight, as I mentioned at the start, and the max power consumption for the Pro Max is that little bit more. The five gigahertz MIMO is actually a four by four versus a two by two on the seven Pro. And that five gigahertz is where you see the max data rate difference. So 8.6 gigabits per second versus 4.3 gigabits per second. So adding that extra two by two has doubled your throughput. And those price in dollars are $189 for the Pro and $279 for the Pro Max. So now let's jump into the Unify console where you can see the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max are right there. So let's click adopt on both of them and we'll come back shortly once that has been completed. These two have now been adopted. You can see the U7 Pro right here. Now, I haven't done any tuning or anything on this. We have the analyzer, which we've seen in the latest update along with the packet capture. So those are two additional features. There's a link down in the description to a playlist if you wanna see how that functionality works. And looking between the two, there isn't really too much difference between them. So we have the original scanning functionality that we had on here on the U7 Pro, and we have all the settings on here that we can play around with. And also on here is where we see the spectrum analyzer. So we have the spectrum right here. We have the insights, which is the same as the other one. And we have the settings within here again, where you can change the channel width, the channel itself, and also the transmit power. So going back to that spectrum analyzer, we can have a quick look on here and it's going off and doing its analysis. So I've just made myself a little bit smaller so you can see the channels behind me and what's going on. So the U7 Max Spectrum, I'll cover this at a very high level, but if you wanna see a further deep dive into how the spectrum works, then let me know down in the comments below. But at the bottom of the waveform, you can see the channel numbers that you can get on the 2.4 gigahertz. And the probability at the top is basically if it can detect something happening on that channel, 
what the probability of that is. So generally when you see something red, it means that there's something going on on the network and you can see the waterfall down below that there's definitely something going on on those networks. The fact that it's red means it's picking up this interference really close by rather than slightly further away. Looking at the chart above, I mean if you were to pick one just looking at this chart, maybe channel 11 uh, looks to be relatively quiet on the 2.4 gigahertz network but you can use this to make a better informed decision when you are picking those channels. So that is the five gig, that was the 2.4 gigahertz. If we look at the five gigahertz, it's relatively quiet on here. You can pick specific channels. Uh, it's not that busy in this area. And if I, again, if I look at six gigahertz, there's not a lot on this channel either. And it looks to be relatively clear. The only thing I have on the six gigahertz right now that I can see are those two access points that I have powered up. So the Wi-Fi spectrum is a really good feature for doing that analysis work to get the best channels and optimizing your network. So we're gonna go ahead and now jump into our first test, but I'm gonna show you the settings that I've set on my access points first, and this will be the same for the Pro and the Pro Max. So I've got a channel width of 40 on 2.4 gigahertz using channel 11 and my transmit power at medium. With the five gigahertz, I've gone to 80, channel 40 and power medium. And then the six gigahertz, we wanna try and use the widest channel width we can, which is 320, I'm using channel 85, and again, the transmit power is set to medium, and I'm making sure the meshing is turned off. Now, at the point of this recording, I am turning off my main access points in the house, so there are no other Wi-Fi signals being run at this point in time. So we'll go ahead, and so that's now getting ready, and we've applied that. Going back to this drawing where we have Wi-Fi 7, going to the two and a half gig access point, the first thing I'm going to quickly do is show you that between the two ports, I'm getting the full two and a half gig. So if I load up the computer, you can see the speed test that I've run before, but if I quickly go ahead and press enter, and then you can see I can start the test. So this is currently hardwired in. This isn't using any wireless at the moment, and you can see I'm getting the full two and a half gig throughput. So two and a half gig on the Nook, and I actually have 10 gig on my Mac. So we have enough throughput just there. So let's jump into the first test, which is testing the U7 Pro. And just to show you the upload as well, we're getting two and a half gig there too. Just behind me, you'll see the Wi-Fi networks we have available, and I've created three different Wi-Fi networks, 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz, because we're gonna test the individual bands. So I'm already connected to the 6 gigahertz, so let's jump straight into the test for this one. So if I press start, we're getting approximately 1100 to 1200 megabits per second in terms of download speed. So that is with the six gigahertz. And then approximately 2260 megabits per second in terms of upload speed. So that is the six gigahertz. And if I quickly zip across and change this to the five gigahertz network, and there you go, you can see I'm now connected to the five gigahertz. If I go and refresh the page and then press start. So let's see what the five gigahertz has given us. So the download finished around 460 megabits per second. And in terms of the upload, we'll let that finish off to get the final result. And that finished at around about 930 megabits per second. So let's take a look at the final results and see how that looked across both Pro and Pro Max. Those tests are now complete and let's have a quick look at the results that you can see next to me. So the upload for the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max was similar across all three ranges. So the 2.4 gigahertz, you can see 279 and 276, five gigahertz, 982 and 930. So there's about 50 megabits per second there. And there's a slightly bigger jump with the six gigahertz. So 2,440 megabits per second and 2,260 megabits per second. Now at that sort of speed, depending on what you're uploading, are you gonna notice a massive difference between the two? Most probably not. But let's jump into the download now and you can see the results right there. So again, 2.4 gigahertz, fairly similar in terms of download speed. The five gigahertz range, you're getting that little bit more. So 375 versus 459 megabits per second. And then the six gigahertz, you see an even bigger jump there. So 897 megabits per second versus 1,197 megabits per second. Again, I will mention MLO is not currently available on the U7 access points. As soon as it is, I will be out with a video to show you what the difference is between MLO versus no MLO. For this second part of the test, we're gonna go ahead and go to four different parts in the areas of my house. So if I quickly show you this right here, you can see we have the first floor on the left-hand side and we're currently sat where test one is. 
Test two is the other side of the house, and then test three is below the access point on the ground floor and the furthest point in the house. So we're gonna run four different tests, and if you've not seen it before, Ubiquiti have something called Wi-Fi Man, which is an app that allows you to do a signal test and a throughput test all in one individual app. So we're connecting with my iPhone using Wi-Fi 6E so I can utilize the six gigahertz network, but just like the previous test, we're gonna use the three different bands to see what signal and throughput we are getting. The access point connects to the switch at 2.5 gigabits and the switch to the Dream Machine SE is a DAC cable, so that is connected at 10 gigabits. I know that says 10 gigabit ethernet, but I'm, I am telling you it's connected via a DAC cable. And just to show you how the app works, we can go to the signal tab and you can see the sort of signal strength that we're having. And as we move around the house, that signal will fluctuate up and down. And right next to it, you can see the throughput on here. And that throughput is then showing you the kind of throughput we're going from this device to the UDM SE. This is the sort of speed we're gonna be getting. So let's run through some of the tests that we've got and have a look at the results. So we're gonna go through band by band. If you wanna pause at any point, you can do if you wanna see the results in a little bit more details, but I'm just gonna quickly run through these as a high level. So we can look at the first floor just here and you can see the test one where we're inside the room. The throughputs are not great. You can see the Pro Max is giving you that slightly better throughput. If we go down to the ground floor, for example, where we get to the furthest point away, again, you can see the results are not exactly great, but you're still getting a signal all the way down to the furthest point in the house. And that is with the 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see that's minus 70 and minus 60 dBm. Now I think this is where the speeds get a little bit more interesting. So this is the five gigahertz. You can see wherever you are that the signal is slightly better with the Pro Max. That's probably the bigger range that is quoted on the website. And you can see the throughput again fluctuates ever so slightly. Whereas if you look at test one initially, the Pro gets a slightly better throughput than the Pro Max. So if we move to the ground floor where we've run the test three and four, you can see again, we're getting good signal and good throughput underneath the access point on the ground floor. And at the furthest point in the house, you're still getting a signal. We're pushing towards the poor end of the signal, but you are still getting one at that point. And then finally, we have six gigahertz. Now the throughput speeds obviously are a lot more impressive on the six gigahertz network. So we have minus 46 and minus 48, but both of them were getting more than a gigabit throughput. Again, with test two, similar sort of DBM, it's around 72 to 69, but you're getting around 500 megabits per second throughput. And then finally, if we move to the test three and test four, test three, the Pro Max actually gave a slightly better signal, which obviously results in a better throughput. And finally, the test four, you can see, the Pro Max gives you, again, that slightly better signal, which allowed you to get a better throughput at the furthest location. I hope this has given you some insight into the Pro versus Pro Max and which one is better to use in your use case. At the furthest points in my house, the Pro Max did give me the slightly better performance and throughput. Is this enough to sway me to spend that little bit extra? Probably, but the bit that pushes me over the edge is the Spectrum Analyzer. This this I feel is going to be helpful for a lot of people to understand the kind of signal that they have in their area and which channels to use to maximize your signal strength and your throughput of your network. And just before we finish, I'm going to run through a couple of thermals. So I've taken them both off and left them on for a few hours just to see how warm they get. Just to touch, you can feel the U6 Pro is a little bit more warmer in here in terms of heat. And if we see just here, we're about 35, 38, 37 is a really hot spot around here, 39 degrees just there. And on this side, if we have a look, we're 26, 28. So it's a lot cooler. The U6 Pro Max is definitely a lot cooler. That is because of one reason, and I'm not sure you'll be able to hear it, but there's actually a fan that's inside here and I can hear that blowing out just here. So there is a fan built into here to keep it cool. And in the U6 Pro, there's nothing I can hear in here, but that is very warm to touch in terms of the access point. So let's take a look at the hot side. So for the U6 Pro, we're looking at 46 degrees or 116 Fahrenheit. And if we look at the Pro Max, so that runs a little bit cooler at 41 degrees, which is about 107 Fahrenheit. So both of them feel very warm to touch. This definitely does feel a lot warmer, but obviously within here, there is a fan to keep it a lot cooler. 
I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down in the comments which one you would pick out of these two or if there's anything further you'd like to see between these two models. Also, the links to these products again are down in the description below, so feel free to check them out. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.